systems rig, man, it's time to break free. Eyes wide open, gotta see what I see. Standing on the front lines, fighting for the truth. Lift the veil of lies, it's time to be the proof. Take a stand, don't you back down. Raise your voice, let's shake the town. We're the voices that won't be ignored. Breaking chains, yeah, we're ready for war. With the power of the people, we'll make them see a world of justice, united and free. United and free. All right, everybody, so thought I'd jump in here real quick for uh, just a little discussion about the case so far, thus far. Um, I don't think this one really has too much, in my opinion, for what I've seen today, and I've been listening a lot. Um, I haven't been watching. I've been listening, kind of coming back in throughout. Um, but uh, from what I've listened to and seen and heard, this doesn't seem to me like this is going to be uh, a case that's going to – be too troublesome for the jury to find her guilty on. I think because when you have insanity cases, you, you've got to show that the person had no concept of right or wrong. So uh, the fact that she, um, you know, uh, had a getaway bag packed and things of this nature. Now she, she attempted to take her own life and she was doing this. Uh, it looked like a, a, a sacrifice type situation. Um, I understand that, but um, again, that does not mean that she, that, that she meets the 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 definition as per as needed under the law to say she was not aware of what she was doing and that it was wrong. Um, Bear, no problem. Um, it, you know, uh, no problem. Now, for those of you out there that are um, that are uh, not aware, right, about this case, because I did a little reading on it. Uh, and she is under a lot of medication. So, if, so judging her looks, if you've noticed that she's not really feeling that she did shed some tears earlier uh, towards the end of the day. But if you've kind of noticed, she just kind of has a look. She's kind of apathetic. Um, don't let that don't don't let her behavior judge uh, because the judge did go over that. She is she is highly medicated. And that came out when uh, if you go back, you can watch the video when they. Uh, they had to go through a procedure at the beginning of this where they, the defense was stipulating that this crime happened and if she committed it, which takes a lot of the uh, need for the state to have to get into proving certain elements of the crime. So they're, they're basically stipulating that she did this, um, stipulating how it was done, all of that. But in order for that to be done, the judge had to get into what she was on. And she's on quite a few medications in order to allow her to stand trial because there was actually an issue at the very beginning of this case, whether or not she was competent enough to stand trial. At one point she was not competent enough to stand trial. That's what has happened four years ago. It's been quite a delay because they had to get her up to level to the level of standing trial. Um, so I assume I'm keeping my mind open, uh, but I know insanity cases are incredibly hard because you've got to prove that the person had, lost the ability to understand what she was doing was wrong. Um, and I think they're going to show through text messages, things she was saying, the fact that she had a bag ready to go, a getaway bag, if I guess if she wasn't successful, uh, even the fact that she was killing herself uh, no, kind of can all be used to say she knew what she was doing was wrong um, and that she wasn't totally broke with reality. Now she wasn't successful in killing herself, but it's, but, but when to, in order for her to be, absolve completely for a matter of law uh, and, and be found not guilty by reason of insanity, she's got to show that she had lost all concept of right or wrong at the moment and she wasn't able to perceive it or understand it. And I think the state's going to prove here that, that she did. I think that I, I really just don't think the jury's going to struggle with that um, because her boyfriend or whatever this guy is, the cult leader is going to testify and 
he's going to be put on the stand and I, it's going to be interesting. Look, this is going to be a wild trial, um, but it's not going to be a wild who done it. Um, and who knows, perhaps I'm keeping an open mind here. It's a tough one, you know, to do that with because a, a child passed away and I've got a three month old that watches the trials with me. And I'm looking over at him thinking, how could you do that? Like, uh, this is just, it's just unspeakable. Um, so for me, you know, uh, that in and of itself makes it would, would, would make me lean towards giving some credence to the fact that she had to have had some sort of break with reality. But we're we'll see. We're we'll see what the medical evidence tells us. We're we'll see what the experts say and we're we'll see if they can prove beyond a reasonable doubt. But again, there is all there is a burden on the defense to prove an insanity case. So they don't have to prove it beyond a reasonable doubt. They have to prove it by a preponderance of evidence, which is basically 51 percent. That is 51% or greater likely that she was insane. And then the state has to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that she wasn't insane. So it's kind of a confusing thing for jurors. And that's where that's why that's why some of you might say, well, why would we proceed at all? Because when it goes back to the jury, if the jury's applying the law as it's written, then they actually have to ask themselves, do you believe she was beyond a reasonable doubt? that it was beyond a reasonable doubt that she was of sound mind and fully understood what she was doing and decided to, to kill her baby. And the state's theory is this was done as some sort of uh, issue that she was trying to basically be vindictive to the boyfriend because he had these other wives, even though she, I think she was the only legal wife. Um, you know, whether or not that sets with the jury or not, I don't know. But I think in a lot of ways, we don't want someone walking. We, we don't want this to be okay because to me, I think it's, I, I, I think she had to have known what she was doing was wrong, but I think to me, it's more of a mitigating factor for sentencing. That's really where I think this will go, but that's also the point of all of this. The judge gets to hear all of this. So when she's sentenced, there can be a mitigation um, to a degree. Now, some, you know, if she was in Nevada, um, I don't know if you guys saw the Judge Jumper trial, but uh, in the Nevada, in Nevada, you can actually plead guilty by mental defect, which actually mitigates your sentence. And I have a feeling if that was available in Georgia, which it's not, that this would be a case for that, uh, custom made for that, because then, you know, it, this will kind of be a prism to understand what she did here. And then it allows you to avoid a trial and, you know, get some mitigation on the sentencing end, get mental health help, uh, all of that stuff, but you're still going to serve time. You're still going to serve time in prison. Um, but you're also going to have the ability to get, to get additional resources to help yourself. Um, so I could, I could have seen if that would have been available in the state of Georgia, that that would have been a route for a case like this, but listen, that, you know, when in doubt and, and it, a trial is always a good thing to have, especially because it allows for the for the state to have to come and make their case. And if there's any chance, again, the fact one of the things that's kind of standing in the back of my mind is four years. Right. Um, it's taken the state four years to come to trial because she wasn't able to be, be declared mentally competent to stand trial until last year. So about eight months ago. So. And the judge went through all the medicine she's on. So to some level, there was a lot of problems going on there mentally. And again, I'm not an expert on this. Now, my wife is a mental health nurse, so I intend to pick her brain on a case like this because uh, she can maybe get provide some insight that uh, I don't uh, appreciate having. She's around individuals. Uh, she's been around people who are arrested with crimes and they're brought onto her floor because she works on a secure unit. Uh, so she, she's seen people, you know, in different aspects, in different stages uh, of, uh, of, of, of the criminal justice process that have come to her floor or that have come to her plate, her, her facility for a mental health evaluation. Um, and, you know, she, so she, she has a little bit of experience with, with, with this that I think she can, she could, say, yeah, that that's actually, you know, there's a possibility here that, that, that this is the case or not. She's pretty good at judging it. Um, so I'll be interested to get her opinion on this uh, as this trial progresses. Um, 
I believe this judge seems like a no nonsense judge. The fact that she was willing to go till six o'clock tonight, which is seven o'clock for the trial watchers out here, because just so you all know, this case is a on a hour delay. So tomorrow the case will begin at 10 a.m., not 9 a.m., because the judge is demanding an hour delay and they have an actual member of the of the clerk's office watching the case who will who is a, who is in real time connected with the producers of court tv letting them know if there's anything that they that needs to be blurred or anything that needs to be edited out uh, to ensure that things that aren't supposed to get out don't get out uh so this judge has been very very concerned with that doesn't even she really seems like she really probably would prefer that there be no no cameras in the courtroom but that's not her decision that's not her choice and the walls do not permit the judge to just throw everyone out now she threw law and crime out earlier today if y'all saw it come up on law and crime she threw law and crime out she threw a local news station out and she said you they didn't file timely motions to be in a position to be able to stream it so they she said basically you have to piggyback off off the court tv live stream you can't be on your own with your own cameras because they had their own cameras that they were going to be using uh with their own camera angles so that might be rectified tomorrow so we might have additional places that we can pull from but pretty interesting stuff that happened earlier in the day which is why this thing got off to a late start um but let me know let me know in the comments let me know in the chat i've seen obviously this has been a very uh very, uh, uh, I've, I've been enjoying watching the chat today and seeing everybody's perspectives. Um, I've got to go back and see the knife. I haven't seen that. I've, like I said, I've been listening a lot, um, moving around. It's my five-year-old's birthday today, so we've been moving around doing stuff with that. Um, and we're about to go into birthday mode here in a few minutes to celebrate with him. But, um, yeah, um, I got to go back. I want to definitely go back and take a look and see. Now, also, guys, check out the, the Louise McCase as well as going on. So if you've been watching this all day, go back and check that one out. They played his police statement. If you guys have been following that, extremely interesting stuff. I was kind of bouncing between the two because they played his police statement, and it is really, really interesting. Um, I'm going to try to – I'm going to grab that out and make it its own separate post because it's worthy of listening to – but it's his police statement, and he gets into a lot of stuff with that case. Um, it's really interesting to hear what he claims is going on. Now, he's guilty of sin, in my opinion. It's just, just what I think. And I think that police statement pretty much seals it. Uh, but, you know, maybe there's a juror there that that, that that believes what he's saying is true. I don't believe it, though. Um, so, um, you know. That's, uh, that's what we got there. Oh, no problem, Jamie. I'm glad I was able to clear that up for you guys. Like I said, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm always in and out, so I'm not always able to jump right in. But I saw I've been, I monitor the chat. I see stuff. That's why I will jump in or I'll try to throw things in the chat from time to time to keep you guys apprised of what's happening. And in uh, ideal situations, I will. Uh, today was a, a big day. We had so much going on with. There was another case that went that was scheduled to go to trial today, and it ended in a plea bargain, um, and it was just crazy. So uh, lots of stuff going on. And then we've got a bench trial, the Ibera trial, which is another Georgia case that's on a bench trial. It doesn't – If for those of you that were interested in that, that, that will resume again next Monday. Is this going to be kind of like the Quinton uh, Nixon case? When you're on a bench trial and you don't have a jury – the judge will fit them in around his schedule. Uh, thank you, Hannah B. I appreciate that. I will let him know. Uh, he's turning the big five, and he's very, very excited. Um, yeah, Jamie, that was – and, and then they didn't even do coverage of – like it was tough to figure out. They didn't cover the, the last bits of it. But the Ibera case is going to probably be similar because it's, it's done on, on the convenience of the judge. So it can take weeks um, since there's no jury – uh, the judge will just kind of say, all right, well, we're, we're having a day of trial here. We're having a day of trial here. Oh, there's witnesses available. Um, it kind of becomes kind of a cluster because the judge is the trier of fact. So in his opinion, he can keep it all together. Um, oh, yeah, the Louise McGuire is horrible. I mean, like, 
it's just ridiculous that he even – I mean, listen, I can see him thinking that that – but, I mean, come on. We see you in Walmart. You're buying the machetes. It, you know, oh, yeah, this guy decides to kill her over some Amazon stuff. Are you kidding me? When you got this girl pregnant and you're trying to break up with her, come on, man. Like, this guy's going away. But it's a – it's – it's it's a long, it's a big case. It was a big investigation, and they're doing a good job locking the key on it. Now, the co-defendants will be interesting because we'll see what their defense is. I mean, I think they should have taken pleas and testified against him. Uh, that was their best bet to get to, to get something here. But maybe they can say he did it. It's going to be he did it all, and he forced us to do it. But I think the, I think his story is totally ridiculous. And uh, what a what a horrible situation! I mean, what a just a horrible, terrible, sick situation that he deserves absolutely deserves to get the most. Oh, and William Mazingo, oh, that was brutal as well. Yes, and I've got there be I've got more. I, I've got the, all the hearings up, so you guys can see that if you missed any of it or didn't get to see it. And I'm going to be posting some excerpts from the hearing that are. That'll be highlights. I'll be working on that. So uh, lots coming out. But yeah, the Mazingo case, that was disturbing. I didn't really get to focus too heavily on that. So I'll be going back and re-watching that as, I, as I'm uh, checking it out tonight. I'll be running it at a two-time speed to try to pick up on the things I missed. Um, and uh, yeah. But I'll tell you, but hey, look, this is an interesting case. I think this is going to be, this is not going to be as fun as the Farish case because the Farish case was like a true Hitchcockian whodunit where it was like, man, I mean, you know, you're just going at it. This one is more of, there's no whodunit aspect. It's just, you know, do you believe she was insane? It's really sad circumstances and hideous details. Um, and as you can see, Carson, the three month old, he agrees. <laughs> uh, but uh, but yeah. So so anyways, guys. I tomorrow, ten a.m. We'll be back at it again, covering this case. The Louise McCase will be back at it at ten a.m. tomorrow. Um, I I bear a case won't be up again until Monday. There might be other stuff that pops up, um, but I think those are going to be the two main cases we're going to be covering this week since Mozinga pled out and. Hey, I think these two will be pretty interesting. It's a, to covering two cases is enough <laughs> to try to keep them straight and understand what's going on. So, anyways, guys, with that said, I am going to jump off here and get to get into birthday mode. And um, until then, until tomorrow, uh, you know, let justice prevail. There'll be some videos coming out for those of you. If you, uh, I'm. I'm there will be testimony. All the testimonies are coming out. I try to put the individualized testimonies up so that you guys can see that. Rewatch it if you want to, et cetera. I'm going to start playlisting the testimonies up in a separate playlist, too, because I know some people like to watch the whole live. Some people want to see the individual testimonies. Uh, I know for me, it's I like to sometimes get back and grab them, and it's easier to just have a video. So uh, be on the lookout for that. Those will be coming out throughout the rest of the evening. And then, like I said, there be some. There's a bunch of Louisiana stuff I got to get out, and then there's that hearing as well. So be on the lookout. Lots of stuff coming out. I have your notifications on, guys. Hit that subscribe button, and uh, I'll be talking to you soon. And I'll see you tomorrow.